Hi, I'm Forrest Hamlet Brown. You know how people say they were born to do something? Well, I was born into the car business. And my favorite car is my first car. And it's right there. 70 Mustang Mach 1. Injury years ago has kept me from doing the things I love. I'm better now, and my scars tell my story. Now I search for people who, like me, have an inspirational and sometimes life-changing story to tell and the scars that remain. So join me as we cruise around in a cool car, listen to a good story, and finally see their scars. This is Scars and Cars. Scars and Cars, brought to you by the Browns family of dealerships. Find them at 4browns.com. Welcome to Scars and Cars, everybody. We have this sweet 75 Jeep CJ. We're gonna go for a little cruise, but before we do that, let me tell you a little bit about this thing. Hey, let's start with this iconic seven bar grill. You know it's a Jeep when you see the seven bars and a Wrangler or a CJ when you got the round headlights. Six cylinder inline. We got lots of torque, lots of power. Check this out, AMC. A lot of people don't even know what that is anymore. Hey, this is a fun driver. It's got a three speed on the floor, manual transmission, four wheel drive, of course, and it's got that original Jeep AM radio, roll bar for protection. But of course, we got rid of the top, we got rid of the doors. We're gonna have some fun. This is a driver, it's not a trailer queen like they talk about. We're gonna get this girl dirty. Everybody. Welcome to Scars and Cars. Hey, it's Forrest Hamlet Brown, and I am driving a 1975 Jeep CJ. And I got a really big Jeep fan with me today. His name is Tom Gibbs. That's right. That's right. Thanks for coming. Lots uh, of Jeeps. Yeah, thanks for having me, Forrest. Appreciate my service manager letting us drive this. Uh, it's a 75 Jeep CJ, three speed. Uh, it's been tricked out a little bit, but it's pretty original. I mean, it, it drives, it's, it's kind of a handful to drive, but it's fun. Tom, we are in historic and beautiful El Cater, Iowa. This is where you grew, kind of were born and raised here. Which yeah, is, I mean, yeah. Lived most of your life here? Lived, lived, lived the large majority of my life here. I uh, left for a few years to go off to school and met my wife there and yeah, brought you know, her back to brought her back to small town Iowa. Yeah, At least that's, that's what her point. mom says my plan was. <laughs> <laughs> Cruising historic El Cater and have a place of interest right here, and you might know a little bit about Tom. My great grandpa started it in Elkport, and my grandpa moved El Cater work at the courthouse, but he started the insurance in about 1938 at his house, and then had grown enough by 1954 to buy a building downtown, so. Is that the building? Yeah, that's the building. Been there ever since 54. So tell me, what was your first car? My, oh, my first car. <laughs> Uh, the first car I had uh, that I would consider my own was uh, uh, bought up the end of Main Street there. Uh, At our old dealership. The old dealership, there, yeah. yep. Yep, uh, 84 Pontiac Fiero. 84 Fiero. Yep, it was a black one with the pop-up uh, headlights and four on the floor. Probably shifted much like this. It was a, it was a little, little heavy. Yeah, I remember those but, cars. But it was I... fun as heck to drive, except in the winter. I showed it to my dad, and he was like, "No, we're not going to get that." And and uh, then one day, he, when we came home from school, he surprised us. It was in the driveway, and I remember him saying, "Now this is your your mom in my car, and uh, we're going to be driving it around and taking it. And I've, I'll, I'll probably take it on vacation or or to work and things." And and that lasted for about uh, I don't know maybe a week or two.
two and, and I took it over and ended up taking it off the car. Yeah, it then, became yeah. my car. That mid-engine rear-wheel drive tested all your winter skills, to say the least. <laughs> I once did a 360 on hi Highway 56 and stayed on the highway though. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pull, well, fishtailed back further and further each each way and finally went all the way around. And I'm sure if you had a, a camera recording me during that time, some choice words came out. <laughs> but, uh, but I ended up facing directly down the highway after all that, so. You pulled it out. I pulled it out, yep, yep. My first uh, car I bought was a Jeep. Uh, it was? Yeah, yeah. That's the Jeep, right? Yep, yep, yep. It was a two-door, two-wheel drive, four-speed Jeep Cherokee. I don't really? know the year anymore, but it was early to mid 90s, probably the first car I bought. It was as basic as you could get because I was spending my own money that time. But uh, yeah, it was fun. There's the old Central High School coming up here. Brings back some memories here. Yep. Yeah, you were uh, a good long jumper, I remember. Yep. And I had a friend that also long jumped, and it would seem like you guys would go back and forth all the time, uh, but you ended up usually winning. <laughs> I always remember your your dad was always there, your mom. Uh, yeah, you yeah. Had a funny story about his, uh, uh, he always wore that snowmobile suit when it was uh, yeah. kind of colder days. His track meets, they can be really cold. Yeah, he, he, he would joke that people made fun of him, but he could have sold it, you know, a hundred times over. He'd go get hot chocolate and people would uh, come up to him and say, hey, can I borrow that snowsuit? And so yeah, I was pretty much used to him. Well, it was kind of embarrassing as a kid. I don't blame him now as an adult and going to track meets myself with my own kids. I need a snowmobile suit too. You gotta stay warm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Tom, we're going to one of your favorite places. Can you tell us about it? Oh, you bet. I love it here. I, I, uh, as a kid, we used to kayak, or actually at that time, we didn't have kayaks, just canoed uh, down here. And, yeah. and then after I moved away for a little while, every, any chance I got back to town is on my list to do. I canoe down here. But it's one of my favorite places in the county. It's just beautiful down here. Now they have hiking trails and and uh, historic tours and things. Yeah, a lot of volunteer time and money's been put into the, the mill and the, and the inn building, and the cooperage has already been restored too, I guess. Uh, and I can't forget this beautiful bridge we'll go across. Oh, it, it, yeah, it that was washed a, out, right? Yeah, yeah, it was washed out, and that was a million dollar fundraiser. Uh, it was washed out in the 2008 flood. They could have just put back a concrete bridge, yeah. but they did the old historic bridge. Hey, welcome back, Scars and Cars fans. We are parked right next to the banks of the Turkey River uh, here at Motor Mill. Kind of a really cool little area. If you ever get a chance to check it out, a uh, really neat campsite here. Uh, the Motor Mill, Tom was telling us he knows all about it and <laughs> can tell you a little bit more. Uh, but uh, we are going to get into the a little more serious side of scars and cars mm -hmm. uh you're going to tell us about uh, what happened and why you have this scar so if we could maybe s start from the beginning what what is it that uh, you were you were diagnosed with uh the technical term is anaplastic oligodendroglioma whoa you might have to say <laughs> that a few times because i'm not going to be able yeah, to repeat it that. took me years or a, it's been a couple years it took me a, probably a year to memorize it myself so Anaplastic anyway means means cancerous. Uh, glioma is the other bad part of it. The, the, I know gliomas are not are not a good type of cancer to get. The rest of it, I have no idea what it means. But just kind of how it how it all started and how I found out about it is uh, it was New Year's Day of 2017, and uh, I had driven home from Southern Missouri, where my wife lives, yeah. uh, from holidays. And it was a super bright and sunny day and very, very cold. I think it was a high of 12 below that day. Jeez. <laughs> and so I got home that night. It's about a nine hour drive. 
I was sitting at, in my basement watching TV in my man cave and had this funny feeling come over me uh, where the best way I can describe it is that my eyes changed and it looked like I was looking through somebody else's eyes. I wasn't first person in my head anymore. So you realize real quick after a while that what you're seeing is not what you're, what is maybe there, it's just what your brain interprets because it changed it all. And, and then at the same time, both my hands went uh, kind of numb and pasty feeling and to where I, I couldn't tell if my skin was tight or loose. And I kind of blew it off as guys often do and I would recommend you don't do that. <laughs> So you just felt like it was maybe a spell that you were having or something just going on? Like I just thought I was stressed from a long car ride yeah. and bright sun all day and yeah. you know. And uh, so I didn't even say anything to my wife or family and, and uh, I went another two months uh, without having any, anything happen. And then I had the same exact thing happen, same thing. I don't remember where I was at but it was the same symptoms exactly. Hmm. And I had that happen maybe about every month roughly or six weeks. And I finally told my wife uh, about it. And she said, you should get that checked out. Yeah. So I saw the doctor in July. I had my first symptom in you know, New Year's Eve of the prior year. Yeah. And it was six months to get in to see a neurologist. So, wow. so uh, uh, when I got in to see the neurologist that day, he, he, I told him his, his symptoms and he said, have you had an MRI? I said, no. He said, we're gonna do that right away. So she said, I'm gonna make an appointment with you at a bigger hospital, because um, we don't do brain surgery here. And I have a feeling they'll wanna to get together with you right away. And so literally that same day, that hospital called me back and, and we set up a time to meet with him the next, next day, or not the next day, the next first part of the next week. And, sure. and uh, uh, he, he, uh, he said, he looked through the MRIs and he said, I can't tell what it is. The only way we can tell you know, with, with brains is to go in there. And he said, I'd recommend we schedule you for surgery next week. Oh, so in a span of 10 days, I went from be, being fine or well, feeling normal most of the time to being scheduled for brain surgery. And he said, and uh, because where it is, we're gonna do it awake. So now where, <clears throat> uh, what hospital? Uh, did you have that done at? Uh, University of Iowa, actually. Okay. Yeah, down in Iowa City. Iowa City. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's yep. where I had yep. uh, some surgery as well. Great, great team of uh, doctors and, and yep. staff down there. Yeah, and my, my doctor was the head of the neurosurgery department, so really knew what he was doing. How did you yep. prepare? I, I just the mental thought of, okay, so, and, and I know this is going to be a little squeamish uh, for some people, but <laughs> to actually cut into your scalp, mm -hmm. your, your mm -hmm. brain, mm -hmm. into your skull, yep. and have that surgery while you're sitting there going, hmm, I can feel that. <laughs> yeah. How did you prepare for that? Well, I had some wise advice from my brother Marshall, who had, had lupus when he was in high school. Yeah. And, and uh, he had, when I told him I had this brain tumor and had to have surgery, he said, well, it's just something you have to do. Nobody can do it for you. You know, right, right. So that was my. I don't mean to cry, but it was. You know, li literally, you, nobody's going to do it for you. It's just mm -hmm. all on you. You have to do it. No turning back. So, so you, it's just getting your head around it, and yeah. Uh, you say goodbye to your your wife, and you put you on the the stretcher, and you're, all of a sudden you're looking up at the ceiling, and they're wheeling you down. The, for the surgery and and so I, I went in my head and found a safe place you know where I was somewhere else and it yep. was around Christmas time at this stage a full year later and uh, so my safe place was back in my living room my dog was on my shoulder <laughs> yeah my my family was hanging out yeah yeah and 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 then uh, so I'd go there and that's where I'd stay during the surgery until they call me back with Tom, 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 wake up, wake up, wake up. We need you to wiggle your fingers, you know. So and then, then that, that vision would pixelate like a TV that's not quite coming in quite right and it would disappear and then all of a sudden I'd be in this bright light in dark room. Yeah. And, uh, and you're in an awkward position because they're, they're working on this here. 
And then I, I, I swear they used a, a utility knife, but I know, <laughs> I know now it's a, you know, it's a scalpel. Yeah. But at the time I was like, why are they using a utility knife? And I felt this tremendous pressure as they cut my head open, you know, you could still feel all the pressure because that's not numb. Yeah. And, uh, and then I felt all the blood drip down from that incision down into my ear. So I think shortly, luckily after that, I passed out for a little bit, went back to my safe place that I described there yeah. in, in my head. And then, you know, Tom, 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 time to wake up, wake up. We need you to wiggle your hand. So then I'm back, hey, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. So if you can explain that a little mm -hmm. bit, I know we talked about that before. They kept you conscious yeah. so that they could kind of tell where, where things were were at, so to speak. I mean, yeah. so that they didn't uh, do too much damage getting, yeah. getting the where, tumor where the out. Where the tumor was uh, would impact the left side of my face and my left hand if it were messed up too much. Yeah. And so they wanted me to stay awake so I mostly could wiggle my left hand. And I assume talk a little bit too. Yeah, so I, I woke up and, and they were putting, uh, uh, I thought they were, it was like layer after layer after layer of surgical paper over my head. Yeah. And I'm kind of claustrophobic. I was, felt like I was being buried in this paper and, and it's on top of the room being dark. And uh, I, I actually said, you know, I'm getting a little uncomfortable here. I'm claustrophobic. And so the anesthesiologist, he actually crawled up under the table and under the paper and said, I'm here, Tom, you know, so. Wow. Yeah, yeah, That's super, pretty super cool. nice. Yeah. yeah. Yep, so uh, that made me feel better, but uh, shortly thereafter, I wasn't feeling much better. Uh, no. Because they, they uh, still, you know, they cut the skin and got to the bone, but then they got to get through the bone. Yeah. You know, and get to your brain. And uh, it's about like what it sounds, uh, and they use a series of drills. So <laughs> uh, I had three distinct drills, each one getting louder and louder and louder. And you uh, think the dentist is bad, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, the, the dentist yeah. and I'm drilling, this is <laughs> right. oh, I mean, crazy. Yeah, and the third drill was so incredibly loud and uh, shaking, you know, you're shaking too, and your head is because yeah. it's, it's drilling into your skull. I, I, I just remember saying, dear God, how did I get into this situation? Why, why am I here, you know? Get me mm -hmm. out of here. And and that that because i can't take anymore that's where i just had reached the point where i couldn't take anymore with that last drill yeah and uh i passed out and woke up in the uh recovery room after that so really yeah yeah so mm -hmm. you got done with the surgery and then what was your recovery from there and what was your prognosis mm -hmm. so so what the surgery did was it it cut out the the tumor but the tumor had some little tentacles uh, that spread out from it sure and they couldn't get the edges basically those those tentacles that's what made it a grade three okay stayed in the hospital not as long as I was supposed to because uh, I was pretty physically fit and they did their tests and they said you can go home and so I was I was eager to get out of there oh yeah yeah do you remember <laughs> how long you had to stay in, in the hospital well, I was supposed to stay five days and I stayed uh, one day. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 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 They're chopping on your brain one day. Right, your right. Skull the well, that's what my wife said. Later, you can't go home. How can I take care of you? you yeah. Know? So then what was your uh, recovery regimen? Did it take you a while to get back to where you're at right now? Oh, or? yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How long? Yeah. Did, well, uh, the, 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 the recovery time from this kind of surgery is six weeks off from work and yeah. six to seven or eight weeks uh, before you you start feeling better and so what was your prognosis i mean once mm -hmm. you came back and were visiting the doctors i know you said maybe telling you some bad news what I mean, yeah you know, yeah sharing that with us well initially i was told somewhere around five to seven years to live you know wow. uh, and i i decided i wasn't a patient anymore i was a survivor you know i was a warrior going yep. back to central school so but making that that twist in your mental attitude Again, not trying to, to uh, brag, but it's a, it's a tough thing to do, but you have to do it because you have, again, you're the only one who can do this. And if, if you don't do it, nobody else. I had tons of help, tons of help and lots of support, but again, you're the only one that's doing it. So you gotta right. make up your mind you're gonna do it. And... Yeah. 
Well, that's awesome. And I really appreciate you sharing your story with us today, Tom. And, and you know, I, I have seen you uh, kind of through this journey. And I mm-hmm. got to say, I'm no, not joking, not trying to make you feel good, but you look great, man. You look like <laughs> you're doing really well. Appreciate it. Uh, you're sporting that earring like we talked about <laughs> earlier. You yeah. know, you can pull yeah, that off. Bet, Me, I, I don't think I could do that. But uh, no, good for you. And uh, I just uh, want to take a quick minute here, if we could. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about your faith, and I just want to say a quick prayer and uh, see if you have anything else to add. But uh, yeah. if, if you could join me on that real quick. You bet. All right, awesome. Yeah, I mentioned to you I've gotten a lot more religious uh, during this this uh, circumstance and pray daily, so yes. I, this will just be, be good. That's great. All right, well, just want to say uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for all the blessings that you give us, and look out for those who are sick or injured and uh, help uh, be inspired by Tom and keep on fighting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks again, Tom. Uh, Now we get to the really kind of interesting part where you get to show us your scar. Show us your scars! We're going to look at this nine and a half inch scar. It starts (laughs) right down here and goes all the way up and around and it ends right about there pretty crazy it's almost like a reverse question mark it is yeah it looks very much like a question mark. <laughs> yeah thanks yeah. again tom yeah you bet you know you gonna, appreciate being on it you're, you're gonna <laughs> kick this thing man i gotta <laughs> give you a hug brother all right yeah. thanks again for yeah, being on you. scars and cars thank you hey thanks for checking us out at scars and cars we hope you liked it but we'd love to hear your feedback any comments you have tell us what your favorite car is or if you got a scar story please share it with us Who knows, you might be on the next episode of Scars and Cars. So thanks again, check us out online, and this has been a great episode of Scars and Cars.